I'm Tammy Dana Bastian, Mayor of Rowlett. And I'm Brian Funderburg, Rowlett City Manager. Welcome to the November 2020 edition of Spotlight on Rowlett. The Rowlett Housing Finance Corporation was incorporated in 2017 to provide safe, affordable housing as a foundation for a meaningful life. Recently, I had a chance to interview HFC Executive Director Rick Sheffield. Here's this month's Spotlight Story. Mayor Dana Bastian here. I am so happy to be joined by Rick Sheffield, the Executive Director of the Rowlett Housing Finance Corporation, also referred to as an HFC. Thank you for being here, Rick. My pleasure. My first question for our viewing audience is, what is a housing finance corporation and why do they exist in communities across our nation? Well, Mayor, a housing finance corporation is a public nonprofit corporation and is created under the provisions of the Texas Housing Finance Corporations Act. The statutory purpose of this type of corporation is to assist persons of low and moderate income so they can acquire and own decent, safe, sanitary, and affordable housing and to preserve and increase the tax base of the local government. Is the HFC an independent organization or is it part of city operations and, and why is that? Well, the HFC, Mayor, is a not-for-profit governmental agency, but it's not affiliated with the city of Rowlett. Its duties are outlined in Texas Government Code, Chapter 394. Now, the primary reason that an HFC is separate and apart from city operations is that all of the tax-exempt mortgage revenue bonds that are issued, they're limited obligations solely of the HFC. They have no bearing in any way on other taxing jurisdictions. The bonds are actually repaid through the monthly payments collected by the developer. The city has no liability for any debt issued by the HFC. The city's bond rating is unaffected, and there is no tax liability for the citizens of Rowlett. So can you tell me specifically about the Rowlett HFC, when it was formed, why it was formed, and its role in our community? Well, Mayor, as you know, the Rowlett HFC was created in 2017 and tasked with the mission of assisting individuals and families by providing affordable housing options and to help in the financing the cost of home ownership and development. Now, the desire for more diversified and affordable housing options was confirmed by the Rowlett citizens during the update of the city's comprehensive plan in 2019. The HFC has a five-member volunteer board of directors and a paid executive director who are focused on our mission, which is to provide the means for a safe, affordable housing as a foundation for a meaningful life. We currently are partners in a housing development at Lakeview Parkway and Chisa Road that will provide 272 affordable apartment homes for seniors age 55 and up. We hope to have our first tenants move in actually by the end of this year. Now we also offer a down payment assistance program as well as a lease to own program that has been extraordinarily successful. Our focus is providing housing for people earning between 60 and 80 percent of the area median income or AMI which for Rowlett is just over $90,000 per year for a family of four. And Mayor, we're talking about hardworking taxpayers that are living paycheck to paycheck because their housing costs are well over the affordable limit, which defined by HUD is 30% of the gross income. And recently, the National Association of Realtors has released a report showing that in the last six years, home prices have increased 47%, while wages rose simply 16% people are being priced out of the housing market. Now the HFC is also heavily engaged in advocacy for more affordable housing options at the state and national legislative levels. In fact, I am an officer on the board of directors for the Texas Association of Local Housing Finance Agencies and also sit on the legislative committees for the Texas Affiliation of Affordable Housing Providers as well as the National Association of Local Housing Finance Agencies. Rowlett is well known as an advocate throughout the state of Texas. Can you please tell our listeners more about the down payment assistance program as well as the lease to own program that you mentioned? Sure. Uh, we partner with the, the Southeast Texas HFC and provide a 5% grant to assist people with down payment and closing costs when purchasing a home. The program is called Seth Five Star Texas Advantage Program. There's no first time home buyer requirement. And the best news is that because it is a grant, it does not have to be repaid. 
The Lease to Own program was developed by a company called Shreo. It allows a potential home buyer who, for whatever reason, is not able to be approved for a home loan to still pick out the house they want, and then in a period of two to three years, they become a homeowner. We partner with Trio to purchase the home with an assumable mortgage, and then we lease the home to the client. The client now has time to save for down payment funds and be able to repair any credit issues that they might have. In addition, the client has access to TRIO's great set of homeowner training programs to prepare them for homeownership. People can learn more about both of these programs if they visit our website at rowlethfc.org. You know, Rick, we hear concerns from our citizens about the number of apartments in the city. Can you explain why the HFC works to even add more? <laughs> well, that's a fair question, and it's one that I get a lot, quite frankly. Uh, let me explain the thought process a little bit. First, a recent market study I saw documented the demand for 60% AMI housing in the Rowlett area to be over 4,000 units. This is consistent, though, with the overall population growth in the region. Second, we have little land left in our city that's zoned for residential development, whether that be single family or multifamily. Assuming we could find land to build affordable single family homes, there's really no way we can meet this type of demand. Even with homes on, on small 5,000 square foot lots, we could only get eight or nine homes per acre, not near the density required. Now, having said that, we do recognize that people need and want single family options. In fact, today, I am pleased to report that we are in fact in the early stages of designing a single family development that will have three bedroom homes on small lots. One of the most common complaints we hear is that young, hardworking families Young individuals starting out in their careers and older residents wanting to age in place can't find housing that they can afford in Rowlett. The HFC works diligently to meet those needs. We will always continue to try and find ways to provide diverse housing opportunities for hardworking middle class individuals, families, and seniors. How is the HFC able to provide quality housing while keeping the monthly cost affordable to our citizens? Well, now that's really the struggle, isn't it? Most people don't know that affordable communities are built to the same construction standards as all of the market rate communities. What lowers the developer's cost is the Affordable Housing Act of 1986, which was implemented during Ronald Reagan's presidency. This has been the largest public-private partnership in the country. In this program, the federal government provides housing tax credits to states based upon their population. The developer then applies for those credits, and when received, sells them to large corporate investors. This lowers their cost in the property. In addition, now the developer can partner with an HFC to finance at least 50% of the project with tax-exempt bonds. And the HFC also provides sales and property tax exemptions to reduce the operating costs going forward. Now I know that's a lot of information and can be a little bit confusing, and I would recommend that anyone interested in finding out more about this process to come please visit our website at rowlethfc.org. Rick, thank you so much for spending time. I, I know the HFC is, is pretty new in our community, and this really helps our public understand your mission and, and you know, how you're trying to accomplish these important goals for our city. Well, Mayor, it was my good pleasure, and, and thank you for the invitation, and, and we will take any opportunity we can to try to help to, to spread the word and let people know and understand what we really do. And you can visit uh, rowlethfc.org for more information. Absolutely. Why is the ground smoking? Well, the City of Rowlett Wastewater Collection System smoke testing is now underway. Smoke testing is used on the sewer lines to locate breaks and defects. During the month of November, RGN Group, an engineering consultant hired by the City of Rowlett, will perform a physical survey of the wastewater collection system in some of our neighborhoods. The study involves opening manholes in the streets and backyard utility easements and also requires the use of smoke in order to gain information that will be later used to repair and improve the system. During this testing, smoke will exit through vent pipes on the roofs of homes and through sewer line breaks. The smoke is non-toxic, it leaves no residue, and creates no fire hazard. Smoke should not enter your home unless defective plumbing exists or drain traps are dry. 
So Tammy, this is, uh, this is just part of you know, ongoing maintenance that you need to do of your system. Um, I can understand that you know, when the public sees smoke coming in different ways, first thing you want to do is call the fire department. So we're trying to alert the public that we're doing this and it's going to be in designated areas of the city of Rowlett, but it is absolutely useful to us to help find out where those breaks are so we can fix them. Well, it's so much more cost effective to maintain a system than to fix a broken system. So, you know, kudos to you all for uh, doing this study and, you know, finding ways to be proactive in our uh, maintenance work. Well, as, as we're uh, addressing with the public, just be tuned into it. Um, you know, the smoke you see may be coming from your own area, um, but it's, it's a good thing that we do this, so thank you. Over Highway 66, across Lake Ray Hubbard, drivers may notice a new sign that recognizes our veterans and first responders. The Rockwall and Rowlett communities officially dedicated State Highway 66 Bridge as Heroes Memorial Bridge this past month. The ceremony invited featured guest speakers to share some words on the historic day, followed by an unveiling of Heroes Bridge sign. The campaign to rename the bridge connecting Rockwall and Rowlett is the work of a long list of local and state veteran groups, public servants, and patriotic supporters of the Walk the Bridge initiative. Since 2018, these groups have conducted a symbolic 22-mile walk across the bridge on the 22nd of each month, raising awareness of the on average 22 veterans and first responders across the nation who commit suicide due to post-traumatic stress each day. These groups are also working to establish a Heroes Memorial Park as a place of honor and reflection for veterans and first responders. Brian, it was such a great event and so many people have worked so hard to bring this about, you know, um, Life Message and the Third Watch uh, Motorcycle Club have done so much to start this initiative and so many people have joined them. They've really just done an incredible amount of work uh, to get this done and to bring awareness to this important issue for our uh, veterans and our first responders. You know, Mayor, it, what a wonderful vision and uh, the work that the group has put in um, to build the coalition and the interest and to get support and rally the troops, so to speak, to make this happen is just truly a remarkable amount of work. You know, and it's, it's, it's having results because, you know, I know that your uh, Rowlett Police Department is, you know, re-looking at what they're doing to help our officers when they do go through uh, difficult situations. And I know that the uh, VROC is doing incredible work for our veterans. We answer your emails on air about city-related topics in a segment we call Ask the Mayor. Brian, what's our question for this month? Mayor, this month's email asks about special events in Rowlett. With the pandemic still going on, is the city going to have any holiday events, and what are our plans for the future? You know, it's a great question, and currently, because of the pandemic, we're discussing city special events on a month-to-month -month basis. Parks and Recreation is working hard to find creative ways to host city events considering statewide public gathering rules in place by order of Governor Abbott. The current governor's orders prohibit outdoor gatherings of more than 10 people unless approved by the mayor. In the city of Rowlett, we have vested that approval process to the entire city council. Parks and Recreation has been able to alter some events by providing safe alternate plans. For example, for Movies on Main, Parks and Recreation conducted a drive-in version at Community Park. And for our recent Celebrate Diversity, the crowd size was limited and spaces were reserved to keep people social distance while enjoying the various festivities. And Trunk or Treat had a new look this year with a drive through event at Pecan Grove Park and a virtual costume contest on Facebook. Veterans Day will look a lot like a Memorial Day event and will be taped on site and shown online on Veterans Day, which is November 11th. Holiday events will also look different since social distancing is still so critical. We are currently working through the options for our holiday events, so please stay tuned for more information. 
The best way to get up-to-date information on all upcoming city events is to watch Rowlett Parks and Recreation on Facebook or visit Rowlett.com. If an organization is planning to host an outdoor public event with over 10 people, in accordance with Governor Abbott's orders, they must also have permission for such an event. The organization should contact Janet Tucker at jtucker at rowlett.com for further details. If you have a question you'd like to ask the mayor about any city-related topic, please email askthemayor at rowlett.com. Now more than ever, it is important to invest in your home socially and aesthetically. Register now to join the Neighborhood Summit, Neighborhood Values, Home Values, our first virtual conference. This free virtual conference will be from 9 a.m. to 12.30 p.m. on Saturday, November the 7th. Topics will include establishing your neighborhood values, building a neighborhood network, how to preserve or increase your home value, and do-it-yourself improvement tips from the experts. Residents from Rowlett, Garland, Plano, and surrounding communities are welcome to register. Visit ntxneighborhoodsummit.org for all the details. So Mayor, this is a pretty cool event. Uh, as you know, we have a very robust neighborhood life program. And this summit is really important as we uh, join forces with two other cities to kind of help promote our neighborhoods. You know, and this is the second year we've done the summit, and it's even easier this year to participate because it's virtually. So uh, we really hope that we get a lot of participation from our uh, residents, and we have such great neighborhoods and such great leaders within so many of our neighborhoods. And Elisa Bowers, who heads up Neighborhood Life, just does a great job connecting with all those individuals. So we hope that you can join us. Thank you for watching the November 2020 edition of Spotlight on Rowlett. For the latest news, follow the city's Facebook page and subscribe to the weekly Friday at 5 newsletter. For facts regarding COVID-19, how to prevent it, what to do in the event you or a family member become ill, and many other resources concerning our community, visit Rowlett.com forward slash COVID-19. See you next time on Spotlight on Rowlett. Do you know someone doing something positive or a story that gives you the warm fuzzies? Please let us know so we can cover it in our Friday at 5 p.m. newsletter. Let's share all the good things. Email Denise at dparen at rowlett.com. Hi, I'm Councilman Brownie Sherrill. Welcome to the City of Rowlett, and I want to take you on a virtual tour of the Rowlett City Academy. So come on in. The City Academy is free and meets one time a week for 12 weeks. Usually there are two academies each year. The Spring Academy meets in the evening, and the Fall Academy meets over lunch. The goal of the City Academy is to provide you with an overview of all the different departments that make up your municipal government. Sometimes it feels better when you pay your taxes to know how your money is being spent. We will kick off the classes with an overview from City Manager Brian Funderburk and Mayor Tammy Dana Bashan. They will present a top-down look at your city government and from there, you will be introduced to all the different departments and their functions. Usually, Fire Station 1 on Miller Road is up next. You will get an up-close look at Ladder 1, an ambulance, and see how firemen live. Fire Station 1 even has a fire pole. It also houses our emergency operations center that was quite busy during the 2015 tornado. Other classes are held at City Hall, economic development, community development and finance will explain their jobs in the city council chambers. But it's not just lecture. You will have the opportunity to participate in activities like mock council meetings. These hands-on experiences will help you to understand exactly what government is about. 
You will hear pros and cons and you will ultimately have to make choices about projects and budgets and learn how your decisions affect your neighbors. It's fun and it does give you a taste of what it is like to serve on a board, commission, or city council. We'll also visit the Public Works Department and learn about drinking water, sewer systems, and why they cost so much money. You will also learn about streets, sidewalks, and what it takes to keep them repaired. Just like the fire department, you will get to visit the police station. There you will get to tour the station as well as meet Chief Godfrey and Assistant Chief Miller. The final stop in the police station tour is the Rowlett Court. You will have the opportunity to meet Judge Liston and hear a few good stories about life behind the bar. A bus tour will wrap up your learning sessions. You will have the opportunity to see many of the different parks and hear from our parks and recreation people. They too have good stories to tell. I hope you have enjoyed our view of the Citizen City Academy. As soon as we can, we will be assembling the next City Academy class and we hope to see you there. I'm Councilman Brownie Sherrill. Have a wonderful day. Welcome to the Spirit of Rowlett. I'm Councilmember Brownie Sherrill and today's Spirit of Rowlett Award winner is Sharon Phillips. Welcome Sharon. Hi Brownie, how are you? Fine. I understand that you were the driving force behind the uh, light up Rowlett Blue for the police department. It, uh, it was wonderful to see that many porch lights all lit up blue and everything. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yes, I am. Um got the idea off of Facebook actually. I saw a post on there, uh, somebody in Mesquite, Nevada had done it and I thought it was a great idea. Um, I support our police 100% and I thought it would be a nice way to let them know exactly how many re uh, citizens do back them. I, I know on Facebook we've seen where you do a lot for public service, so can you tell us about other events that you've been involved with? Um, yes, actually I finished up one about two months ago. Um, I did a fundraiser. I just simply jump on Facebook and tell the people what I'm doing and, and who it's for um, and ask if anybody would like to donate. And I ended up collecting about $2,500 uh, for the police department and I purchased um, Gatorades, waters, coffee, food, and gift cards for all of the officers. Great, that's good. I know you're a member of the Volunteers in Police Service or the VIPS organization, yes. so tell us a little bit about your involvement there. I, I love doing VIPS. I, I wouldn't still be in it if I didn't. Um, we help the officers out with anything that we possibly can. Um, we do vehicle inspections once a week. We do um, handicap citations so that the officers don't have to. Uh, we work events um, like parking and you know traffic and all of that. Um, we can work in the office administration. Uh, not right now, of course, because of COVID, but when they open that back up, that's one of my favorite things to do. So how long have you lived in Rowlett? Um, I have been in Rowlett for our almost 28 years. Have you seen it change very much? Oh, yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> yes, there was not nearly as much traffic when I first moved here. Um, but, you know, we've got a lot of new businesses. We've gotten DART. Um, probably the, one of the biggest changes that I really appreciate about Rowlett is how, the, how everybody works together if some, you know, the tornado, for example. Everybody pulled together and um, it seems like since then it hasn't stopped um, and a lot of people um, want to get involved and they want to know how, you know, what they can do for their city and, and how to go about doing it. Um, so that's probably my favorite thing about Rowlett. Is that kind of what makes you enthusiastic about the city? Absolutely. Um, I just, this is where I raised my kids um, and I wanted it to be a good place for them to grow up and you know, how do you do that? You get involved and you know what's going on in your city and you know, do as much as you can for your city and it'll be a good city. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's great, Sharon. I, 
Let me just end by saying congratulations to you, uh, you, Sharon Phillips, for all that you do for the city of Rowlett. And I'm Councilmember Brownie Sherrill. Let's keep the spirit of Rowlett alive.